Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be doing a scored review on the Mega Man Legacy Collection Mega Man 5 game. In this collection, there is six Mega Man games, the six Rockman games, each having their own save, and challenges. I will be doing reviews for each of them individually. So, this one's exclusively about Mega Man 5. Now, this game was originally, it was published, or developed by Capcom and published by Capcom, but this particular version, the Mega Man Legacy Collection 1, was developed by Digital Eclipse and published by Capcom. I... Excuse me. Just woke up. I, um rate a game in five different categories, which is story, graphics, music and sound effects, gameplay, and controls, and achievements. Now, this particular game actually has a decent amount of story, which surprises me. So, it at this point in the Mega Man series, this is where the story's starting to fill in a lot. Because I believe four, th it was either three or four explained the point of the Robot Masters in the first one. And then it rolls downhill from there uh, for the story pretty fast. So, all things said, the story in this game is actually alright. I mean, I was a bit surprised that there was this much. Because uh, I only played this one a few times back when I was a kid, so I can't really remember much about it. Now, for the graphics, it's Mega Man, the original 8-bit Mega Man. It's more or less more of the same. Now, um, it doesn't really break the mold in terms of the way the, the stages look. Mega Man looks the same. The Robot Masters look decent. Albeit named strangely, but I think they were doing that since I think it was the third one. And several of the the Wily bosses and stuff like that are definitely a neat take on some of the bosses. So, you know, all in all, the graphics are still pretty good considering how old they are. Now, for the music and sound effects, as with... All the previous Mega Man games, this is probably one of the highlights of the game, is the music and the sound, uh, sound effects. The music with these older Mega Man games have always been really good, upbeat tracks for the stage, depending on um, like what kind of area you're in. Like If you're listening to the background music for this stage, this is the final stage, so it gives you that you're in a rush to save. Dr. Light, because he was kidnapped in this one. And, I mean, all in all, the music's really good. The sound effects are still the same classic Mega Man. So, um, they're all pretty good sound effects for the game. I mean, it makes sense. Um, now, for the gameplay and controls. Now, this game has one new feature, which is the M, or sorry, two new features, which is the M tank, which if you use this, it refills your health to full and all your weapon energy to full, which is a nice touch. I don't remember if this one makes a return in future games or not. I think it does. But that's always nice. But you can only carry one of these for understandable reasons. And then the ability to unlock beat, which is done by collecting the one letter in each of the Robot Master stages until you spell the words Mega Man 5. So, beat is really powerful in this game, and he makes the final boss pretty trivial, so 
it, it's highly recommended you get them. There's no hidden stage items like in Mega Man 1 or 4, which was a bit uh, disappointing. But outside of that, you get some interesting items like Power Stone I found to be honestly completely worthless. It's, it's supposed to be a shield-like weapon, except it spins outward from you. So nine times out of ten you're going to miss what you're using it on. Basically the only thing you'll ever use that on is um, Charge Man. I had to stop and think of who you used it on. Uh, the wave ability is a forward rising wave. It, it's good. It can block projectiles and stuff like that. The gravity hold can screen clear if the enemies are weak or if you have enough power. You can just hit a big guy enough times and it'll take him out too. Gyro attack is uh, interesting. It allows you to redirect the direction of it one time. Uh, charge kick, that one's interesting. While you're in charge kick mode, you are invincible and still deal damage. Crystal Eye shoots a giant globe that bounces around, which is useful for like hitting a bunch of things. So it, it, it has its uses. Star Crash is a throwable shield like the Leaf Shield from Mega Man 2, except it's much slower, so it's not as useful. Uh, Napalm, you... I can't remember if there was breakable objects in this one. It took me it took me a while to get... I don't recall there being breakable objects in this one. So, this one's a ground-based bomb, but, I mean, it's useful to a small degree. It's very useful on the really big robots. It takes, like, four or five shots of Napalm, and you can rapid-fire them. And those big robots hit, like, tanks, so... It's really useful. The super arrow actually is useful because it allows you to stick it to a wall and you can use it as like a makeshift jump platform. Uh, rush coil is a little different than this one. This one isn't. You just jump on it and bounce. You jump on it and he bounces you up and then you have to jump off of it for extra height. It took me a bit to get used to that one. And the rush jet was changed from the last one as well. You don't, you don't have a uh, of rush other than moving them up and down slowly so I mean there's that but all in all the game the gameplay and the controls are really smooth in this game I didn't see any input lag like what I got in Mega Man 3 so that was a plus the uh, the bosses in this game I think this was the point in the game where they made the the stages and the bo or the the bosses in the stages more fair but challenging kind of thing. So I mean, when you got to the boss, usually you have enough leeway, even if you've been hurt a, a fair amount, that you could probably brute force it. Unlike the earlier ones, where it's like one or two screw ups and you gone. But outside of all of that, the gameplay and controls, or gameplay controls and mechanics and all that in the game are a really good upgrade, or a really good touch up from the last games. It really isn't much different in the controls and the basics from Mega Man himself, so nothing's really changed there. Now for the uh, achievements, this game, like the previous four, I'll have one achievement tied to them. Or two. You get one for beating the game. Which doesn't really say much. <clears throat> Just beating the game, which, I mean, that's a, a fairly easy task in a Mega Man game. And the other achievement is beating all six on the same save file. So, after I complete number six on this save file, I'll have the achievement for beating the game. Uh, each game individually and for beating all six on the same save file. The achievements, those two achievements are actually very easy, so... I mean, aside from the time it takes to put in to beat the bosses, there ain't no special thing you gotta do. So, I normally rate a game 
5 out of 10 for average instead of the industry standard of 7 or 8. In this game, with its increased story, but uh, and decent graphics, good, great music and sound effects, and um, pretty decent gameplay controls mechanics, and easy achievements, I, I would say this is a solid 7 out of 10. To me, it wasn't as fun as 2 and 4, but it was still a really fun experience. And overall, I, I would say this is one I would definitely replay. And going back and replaying this after many, many years after being a kid, it, this was a great throwback. So, uh, 7 out of 10. I'll see you guys in the next video. And with all things gaming, game logic, am I right?